evening, beautiful people. I go by Big Drip, aka Lord Overthink, aka Captain Planet, aka Thirty Three Cent, aka realest one your mama ever heard of. To my left is the one, the only, the light drizzle. Ayo. Golf clap. Golf clap. Golf clap. Ah, drizzle. Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Well, welcome, welcome to the corner, people. Uh, we do it for you. Do we, it for the culture. Yes. Boom shakalaka. Um, so we are super, super excited that it is November, and you know what that means. Welcome to Snyder Pump Month, people. Yes, I've been saying it over and over and over and over and over again for I don't work. even know how long now. Probably two months. Oh, oh, it's been a while. So, it's finally here. Yeah, do it. The anticipation must be killing you people, and there's no medication for that. Nope. So today, we're going to start off. We have a friend of ours uh, joining us, and we're going to talk about... So this is basically an intro to our love for DC, our love, or my love, for the Snyder Cut. I love DC. Yes. I do not love Zack Snyder. So we're going to get to the basics. We'll get the basics out of the way this week. Uh, We'll be joined by a friend. He'll get his basics out of the way, you know, let you guys know what he did and contributed, uh, and, and then we can we can all have fun together. We still I still have a couple things I'd like to talk about towards the end of the show about um, some news that happened throughout the week that I th- think deserves a conversation because um, it does affect um, Aquaman and other DC properties. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Um I mean, so, I mean, you can start it off now by, I mean, so what got, what got you, Drip, what got you excited for DC from the, from the jump? What excited you most? DC in general or the DCEU? DC in general. Like, what, what was your starting Batman. point? Batman. That's easy. It's Batman. So it's, it's always been Batman. Um, so what, what? I think the first, I think my first was the animated series, I would like to say. Uh, classic. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right, because it came out in the 90s, and I was born in 96. So, yeah, there'll be the animated series. It's been such a long time, and, like, Batman's been a consistent part of my life this entire time, so it's kind of hard to, like, pinpoint exactly where it started. Because, uh, you know, Bat- everybody thinks Batman's cool. I don't care who you are. The most hardened criminals on this planet think Batman's still cool. Everybody thinks Batman's cool. He's a fucking ninja. I mean, it's, he's a ninja. Excuse me. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, you, you gotta, you gotta, that, you gotta drop cousin, that <laughs> with the cousin. You have to edit that quick. one out. <laughs> yeah, but that being said, it was definitely the animated series that started it. And then from there, there was a lot of. I used to watch the Superman show as well, but like not my favorite. Yeah, yeah, it was not it my was, favorite yeah, show. Very ever. mediocre. Um, I think what started DC as a whole, <laughs> though, because at the time I wasn't like differentiating DC and Marvel. You know, no, we were just superheroes. You know what time, I do. You know. I so I was gonna say that too. I agree with you. So when I first got into and mine was so mine, I actually found a comic book on the on like in the library or something like I can't remember exactly what it was. Yeah. And I couldn't read too well at that point. Yeah. Still can't. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, just kidding. But I got I like the pictures in it. Yeah. You know I, I like the yep. boom. Bang, bow. It was a Batman comic? It was. Okay. But See, look it, at that. See, told you. Everybody thinks Batman's cool. Yeah. Everybody. So that's what jump-started. And then I noticed my mom was like, oh, well, because I brought it home that day. Yep. Um, the, the librarian gave it to me. And I brought it home, and my mom was like, oh, there's a show, a Batman show. So, you know, that was a way for her to not have to watch me for an hour or so. Yeah. Oh, so. oh well, check this out on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think that's cool. Go ahead. Come over here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it moves all by itself. TV's the next generation's babysitter. Yeah, so that's how my that's how I got started, and I, and then, I, but at the time, I didn't, I didn't see a difference between Batman or Superman or Iron Man or Captain America. Yeah, they were just superheroes. They were just that's superheroes. All. Yeah, mine was Batman and Spider Man. Always, yeah. it's always been them too. So uh, all my life, I dreamed for them to meet. But it's, sadly, it will never happen. It and has. It, it's happened in like books and games, crossover not on TV. I, you know, I yeah. was a child, like watching the Batman show, and then I watched the Spider Man show later that day or earlier, whatever the case was. And I just always wanted to see them meet up, but that would never happen. Yeah, and sadly. My point being, I, I wasn't aware. I you see know, what you mean. Nor though. did I care. Um, 
But DC as a whole started with the Justice League show, another classic, just absolute banger. That show is amazing, mm -hmm. and so is Unlimited. I mean, you know, and this, I, I, real quick, I just don't understand, like, how the DCEU could mess up so badly that first time around when you have all these amazing examples on how to tell live action, uh, not live action, but live moving stories of these characters. You have the Justice League show, you have the Batman animated series. The Superman show was mediocre, but it still knows how to tell a Superman story. Mm -hmm. You know, with all these like, prime examples, I just don't understand how you can mess up so badly. And I, I pray, I, I literally, every night before I go to bed, I pray this second run is gonna be better. I think it, I just love DC, and I really want this to work. I think it will be. I think I think the. I mean, there's a whole reason that it is actually happening, and it's because there's. I mean, you could call it. Well, they see you know Warner Brothers sees a lot of potential in in money, yeah. right? Yeah. So a lot of people got behind this movement, whether it was for suicide prevention or it was for the movie, to, the actual movie itself. Yep. So everyone had a reason to to want it to come out. And I think Warner Brothers saw that the the price tag on it, right? The 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 return, but they also saw that there is an outcry. Out out there was an outcry for, you know, this to be done justice. Yeah. No pun intended. It's obviously. really just like a win 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 for them. Mm -hmm. They get, they, there's gonna they'll see money returned. They'll make money off of it. They get the chance to because their originally Justice League was not received well. Most people hate it. So now they get to see, well, if Snyder's really the director they want for long term. Mm. If this works, then we'll see Snyder in the DCU for a long time. If it doesn't work, chances are he's on his way out the door. We might see a couple, maybe one, one, two more movies out of him, and then he's gone. Because they need an overall, they need a Kevin Feige, you know? Yes. So, and uh, I think this is a good chance for them to see if Snyder can be that, that, be that Kevin Feige. And you know what I like? The, so, the, there was a cut. Right, so we'll get into a, a couple more details before we bring Jack in. Um, so there was a cut before the. So the cut that we're going to see is actually a little bit. It's actually a lot of it different than the original Snyder cut, right? Because yeah. now we got additional photography. Yep. His vision shoots yep. all kinds of stuff. His vision might have been this the whole time. Yeah. However, the the realistic, the actual cut was the 214 minute cut. The, the assembly cut and which, changed. which has now been changed yeah. so I mean the, the Snyder cut that everyone fought for isn't necessarily the one that we're getting it's something better because now he got Hopefully. I mean he if I was a director right and I got a second chance yeah. to make a movie I would really do my homework yeah and yeah and make sure that you deliver something yeah. that's going to succeed so as high of the high as the expectation is for this film, yeah, I think if you can do each league member justice in some way, Ayo. then you've already succeeded. Yeah, right. Um, I <sighs> okay. I see exactly what you're talking about, and I'm almost a hundred percent sure that's what he's gonna do. But uh, this is still Zack Snyder. That means we're getting a Zack Snyder movie. Right, whether he puts his best efforts into it or not, it's still a Snyder movie. Yeah. We're gonna get that sta same general feel, feel and style that Snyder brings. That being said, it works for Batman. It works kind of for. I mean, I guess you could do it with like Aquaman or something, maybe Wonder Woman, but I don't think it's gonna work in a Justice League movie. I really don't. Okay. Um, these characters are way too lighthearted. Every single one of the Justice League members, with the exception of Batman, is lighthearted hero types, stereotypical heroes. You know, they're very charming and, and uplifting and charismatic. And, you know, with the exception of Batman, he's just the gloomy. That's kind of like the whole thing, right? Everybody's all brightly colored and big smiles and stuff. And Batman's in the corner, black and you know, there's a tear, he's crying, he has mascara on, he's talking about how life is pointless, you know? That's kind of the whole thing. Zack Snyder specializes in that emo kid in the corner. So that's only one dude that's going to be in the right kind of element. Everybody right. else is going to be completely out of character. This, I, I, you know, I've said it a million times, that, that was the main problem with Man of Steel. It was so 
dark. Superman is a Boy Scout. The movie was so dark. I don't think he smiled once in that movie. We're talking about Superman, for Christ's sake. So I just, I don't, I don't see this working, honestly. I mean, I'm going to watch it, of course. And it might be, like, cool, but it's not going to work. You, okay. you see what I'm saying? I do. And everyone has the right to their opinion. I, I think that if, you know, if the majority of the people like it, then it'll move forward. If it's half and half, it'll move, it'll still move forward. And the only chance that I think that this dies out is that even those hardcore release the Snyder Cut fans are like, meh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, hey, um, so how much did it cost to make this film? They So they... <laughs> A lot. They so they projected it would it would cost them about twenty five to thirty. They end up spending seventy. Yes. But they're changing damn near everything. I mean, from color tone to score, editing, you know, reshoots. Um, I'm assuming you know they're bringing in stuntmen and all kinds of things. You know, the end battle is different. I mean, at that ending alone, that final battle scene alone just editing that and changing that and reshooting it and doing a bunch of stuff to that it's gonna run you a solid 10 mil mm -hmm. you know by itself so they you know they put a lot into this like i said they they ain't they thought they would spend about 20 to 30 and they end up spending 70 right they spend a lot because so i don't think a lot of people understand but when you change a movie into a tv show right so you need to have you need to make sure that each one of these hour four there's four. There's going to be four episodes, each one hour long. You need to be make it so that they're self-contained stories, but connect to a larger uh, arc, right? So it's a one four-hour picture at the end, but each hour episode needs to be self-contained enough where it can stand alone. So you need to. There's a lot of changes that Very need to true. go into that. Yes. Um, I think um, the tone I definitely would like to be seen changed because that red yeah. hue that was in it that's gone that's yeah that's gone that but I, again go. I, yes and that's an ugly hue you're 100 percent correct but again it's good, just going to be replaced with a dark gloomy hue <laughs> you know i and I, that, i'm sorry but that's the main problem here right. i don't want to see snyder gone altogether but they need to learn where to place him what movies to give him you cannot i'm sorry you can't give this guy the dc as a whole Especially not to you gave him to the wrong people. You gave him to Superman and then like DC as a whole. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I, he he belongs with Batman. Um, again, Aquaman would be cool to see because I, I I'm not really a fan of the Jock Bro they went with. I I would prefer Aquaman as he actually is. You know, he's a king mm -hmm. and he doesn't play games. Like Aquaman's not about that. Aquaman don't do no talking. He don't do no fighting. Aquaman's just out to kill. He's very brutal, but he fair. You know, I would right. prefer that more king type right. Aquaman. You Royal, know what I mean? Royalty. Um, so, what happened originally? And I'm sure this is a story no one's ever heard before. Um, so the film started production in 2016, and when it was underway, um, about you know towards the end. Uh, Snyder's stepdaughter, or uh, stepdaughter, uh, Snyder's daughter, uh, she, because it's an adopted thing. Mm -hmm. so I don't know why I said step, um, but his adopted adoptive daughter, she committed suicide. Uh, he stayed on for six weeks longer. Yep. Uh, maybe thinking that he could numb the pain or distract distract himself. However, it didn't work out. And at the time, um, Warner Brothers was you know, looking over the river to Marvel and seeing that, you know, the money was still rolling in, Marvel's still kicking everyone's butts. Uh, so they thought the method to success was to add as many jokes as you can. Um, so they they both set... Uh, Warner Brothers and Snyder got together and they mutually departed. So this was a way for Zack to go grieve uh, and be with his family, and this was a way for Warner Brothers to bring someone else in cut the film together, and that way they could test out that Marvel formula. Both did not work. Um, no, the, I mean, look where we are now. Clearly something went wrong. So Joss Whedon was hired um, and t to mend it together. So that led to extensive reshoots and edited mustache and a tearing of the heart and soul of the film out. 
Uh, and you know that's the film that we got. The CGI mouth is just. That's just one. I'm sorry. I'm hoping a big part of Henry Cavill's reshoots were to get rid of that. <laughs> you know. So and Z uh, Snyder's gone on record several times saying not a single frame of the Joss Whedon reshoots uh, will will make it into his cut. So really? most of the footage huh. that we've seen. That'd be interesting. Yeah, most of the footage that we've seen are just Justice League. That's yeah. jo jo Joss yes. Whedon's version. Uh, yeah. So when people say that we're getting the same exact film, it's a no. We're not. It's a, yeah. It's a very, we're very, not. very wrong. Um, yeah, no, way to you're look not at getting it. the same movie. You, uh, you might just, you might be just as disappointed, but you are not getting the same movie. It will be a very much different movie. Um, I heard a lot of people complain about this, and uh, I respectfully disagree. So when you brought up the CGI mouth, I thought of that scene. Where the kids come up to Superman, they have the the phone, oh, my oh hey God. Superman, how you doing? Blah blah blah. The mouth just ruined that entire scene. It was so hard to like focus. But that being said, I've heard a lot of people complain about this, and I don't understand why. Out of everything I've seen, the DCEU do with Superman thus far, that is like the best, most accurate scene I've seen thus far. It's not a very good scene, but it's the closest thing. Right, where he's, like, giving inspiration a lot. Yeah, and he's yeah. being friendly. He's hanging out with the kids. That's what Superman does. You know, he's supposed to be OP. So that way, when something goes down, he can finish it like that. And then he goes and hangs out with the people. He talks to the kids, and, you know, he helps the people. Superman's a people person. So when he was, like, isolated in, in Man of Steel, he's, like, up in Antarctica, and he's, like, hiding out. Or, like, in a Batman vs. Superman, he's in the middle of the North Pole dragging a yacht. <laughs> through the ocean that seems so out of character superman isn't like that superman is a person at the end of the day superman does not look at himself as an alien or a hero he's a guy from kansas he's uh, just a small town guy from kansas and and that's how he acts right you know he's a boy scout so it just really bothers me when he's not like that right I no, I, I that's the uh, that is a complaint that so I I'm, I love everything uh, I think we've all cleared that up right mm. I am the optimist, um, but even I w wanted to see more like you don't always want to see a brooding hero right yeah. um, Superman when I when I think of Superman I do I think red red blue you know like those are bright colors he's a very bright personality yeah he does things he's like captain america he doesn't exactly. do, he doesn't do it because it's uh like it'll get him a front page headline he does it because it's literally the right thing to do yes uh and he'll yes. question everything yes he and, believes in yeah. the human race uh so I, I i do agree with you there i think that you need to take a different approach so each member of the justice league needs a different they you can't just have one formula that works for everyone yeah it's yeah. it's a lot of different yeah. formulas that make up the Justice League, and you need the, the right balance. Um, you can't just cook with salt. And, I think and a common misconception, people tend to say Marvel, every movie is the same, but it really isn't. They The formula is different. Yeah, no. they all have the same quips and, like, general layout. So, okay, put it this way, an analogy for you. The foundation is the same for all of them, but what's inside of the house and the outside of it and the roofs and the windows and all the inside is completely different. So just because they have the same, I hear that a lot. Like people complain a lot about yeah. stuff like that. So when, when, that's essentially what he's saying is it's every movie, they can't all be the same. Yeah, they can have that same kind of foundation again, but like mm -hmm. the inside needs to be different. The house needs to look different. Right. You know? I mean, I don't, I don't agree with that argument at all. Like for anyone who would say that, because in the first phase of Marvel, you got a war, uh, like a war movie. Yep. You got a, yep. a space like space uh, adventure with Thor. Yep. You got so the first one was Captain America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The war no, movie. I, yeah, no, I got. It. <laughs> um, then you got a, a political kind of yeah, like a Playboy very kind of yeah, kind of political kind of like. Um, yeah. Story of um, what's the, what I'm looking for here, like a um, kind of like an awakening, like a wake up call, you yeah. know, like he's it was you know, like this billionaire redemption playboy. story. Kind of, yeah, something yeah. along those lines, you know, playboy billionaire piece of garbage, mm. and then he gets kidnapped by terrorists. <laughs> and he really like changes, yeah. you know. That's what I was trying to like word. And then to wrap that up, you get a big ensemble movie that changed the, the 
the yep. superhero world. So I don't, yep. I don't agree with that at no, all. No, but it, like I said, the foundation is the same because they all have the quips. Well, actually, in all actuality, Phase One is probably all those movies could like are probably the most different. Right. For, it's like Phase Two and on that they started doing the quips in every movie and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Because Thor, if you use Thor and Iron Man. As an example, those movies are completely different in right. every aspect. They're just nothing similar. And you could say that about all four of the Phase 1 movies. And then also Avengers is where, like, the quips and stuff started, you right. know? Um, yeah, but so, I mean, I think that uh, imitation is the, one of the more sincere forms of flattery, right? Yes. So you can borrow. Right. Yep. All good films do. Yep. Um, Inspire. How many times have you seen a heist film? Right. Or a yeah. western. Yep. Space um, movies. So. Superhero movies. Yeah. There's there's a there's a time and place for everything. You just you need to bring your own originality, and that's yep. what uh, DC needs to start working on. Yep. So, um, we are about to start our our first uh, interview. We are about to start our official DC. Snyderverse expose. Um, I just want to give a quick rundown before we do start this. So today uh, we'll be interviewing Jack. Next week, next Sunday, uh, we will be interviewing Sean O'Connell. Whoa, whoa. Um, so next week's gonna be really fun. The week after that, uh, the the twenty sec twenty second. Yep, the twenty second will be the Nerd Queens. And then the 29th will be Dark Side Ray Porter. So, yes. So oh, that I'm is for that one. yes. That is the lineup. We have something fun for you each week. Uh, so please make sure to join us. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, um, and and contribute. Please. There is a link on our Instagram right now. If you'd like to ask any of the guests a question, you can record a voice question, and I will include it in an episode. However, just do not use profanity. I just that's all I ask. Please keep it PG. Keep it PG. So with that being said, I think we we can cut into we'll bring, this. Uh, bring Jack in. We'll bring Jack. So we're now welcome Jack. We're gonna be switching to the Zoom format. Yeah. So don't get thrown off by that. We probably should have mentioned that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> due to coronavirus, we can't bring people into the the studio, if you will. So we have to do things through Zoom call. So yep. just. Understand so, for this entirety of the month when we bring a guest on, you know, you'll see our normal layout for the first like half hour of it, and then bam, it will jump to like a Zoom layout, yes. and then after that's over, bam, back to normal. Back to this. Just yes. so you guys understand, that's gonna be for the entirety of the month. Yes, and I think that's a good format. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. Uh, I think it works. Yeah. So, um, when, I just I'm ready to get people actually in the studio. You yeah. know, on some Howard Stern. So I really need this coronavirus to go away. To go Please. away. Well, I mean, the president changed today, so it probably will go away tomorrow. Yo, it's a nightmare out <laughs> on the streets. Doug. I don't want to get into that right now. Yo, it's crazy. We have a, we have a couple stories for the end of the day. <laughs> uh, so enjoy this advertisement because I'm gonna stick one right right, right here, right Bam. here, baby. Buy my stuff. Sorry we had to interrupt the episode, but we needed a very good transition, you know, so, buy our merch, bruh. Logan wants you to. Right, Logan? So, yeah, so, head over to the, uh, head over to our Facebooks, uh, Twitters, or, you know, pretty much anywhere, and, uh, let us know. Drip signing in, light drizzle to my left, and we have a guest today, people. You're welcome, sir. May you introduce yourself. Yes. Hey, my name is Jack. I'm from Philadelphia, and I'm a Zack Snyder fan. Woo! My guy. My guy. Welcome to Snyder Month, people. Yes. Uh So, uh, I mean, we'll jump right into it. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the, uh, advertisement I had for you. It was planned deliberately for this month. Um, so Jack, let's, let's dive right into this. Um, so what, what, why are you so passionate about the Snyder cut and why, you know, what did you do to help contribute towards, uh, seeing this, seeing this through? Well, I was one of the fans that, you know, when I, I was like a lot of people, we saw the first Batman versus Superman theaters we were a little bit like, wait, what was this? 
But then I saw the ultimate cut of that. I saw the ultimate cut of Watchmen and even Sucker Punch. When he's allowed to do what he wants, I think his films are phenomenal. And then like many of you, I saw Justice League and I'm like, what was that? That didn't <laughs> feel right. And yeah. it wasn't even a bad movie. It just was, ugh. It, it felt like you're watching two different movies. It yeah. felt too hard to be a Marvel movie. And then there were rumors. There were rumors like everyone heard that there was a Snyder yeah. Cut. I helped sign petitions. I told people about it. But I'll be honest with you. I was a believer, but I never thought we would get it. Right. I mean, I, how many, it's been three years, and now they finally announced it. Yeah. This is, without a doubt, one of the biggest slaps in the face to the Hollywood elite. And you've seen that with some of the articles, the big you know, Hollywood variety, all these Hollywood reporter variety, like, oh, it looks like the same movie. This, this is a big win for fans, because I don't think anything like this has happened in no, film history. Yeah. No, no. Not to my knowledge at all. And no. the fact that it was actually pulled off in itself is truly something special and right. or amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I when I first heard about this, I didn't even think it was a possibility. I, mm-hmm. I, I did no way in hell would Warner Brothers do anything of the such. No way in hell they were planning to spend 20, 20 to 30 million on this. That was their original number. They ended up spending 70. Yeah. So if, uh, if you ask me, oh, would Warner Brothers be down to do that? No, 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 absolutely not. not. And you know, I don't even think about it. I think, uh, I think COVID definitely helped it a lot. Oh, absolutely. And and in a, in a way where um, they definitely put more money into it because now instead of having a bunch of movies being filmed or being, you know, put into production, you really like, you're looking at the vault and you're like, well, that kind of looks like we could do something with that. And then there's people like yourself in the thousands who are Mm -hmm. over here waving, Hey, we want it. Right here, you know, give it to us right here. We're over here. We want it. Yeah. You know and so now Warner Brothers, like you said, due to Corona, you know, they can't really, they can't shoot. They can't release anything. Nothing's really, everything's kind of at a standstill. They have something that's possibly worth money in the vault. And you guys are over here shouting, hey, yeah, we'll take it. Right. All right. So let's, let's go ahead and do this. Exactly. And remember, 70 million is nothing considering they already spent the big 200, 250 million dollar making this. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah so. From Warner Brothers perspective, like, hey, we're making 70 million, spending 70 million dollars for a 250, 300 million dollar movie, and the right. marketing's over, already done. Yeah. Right. You know? and- so it's actually not that bad. You consider how expensive Game of Thrones is or some of these big yeah. budget shows. They're actually spending not that much money for something that's going to have a huge return on investment. And don't forget that AT&T most likely played a role when they took over. Yes, They got yes. rid of a lot of people in Warner Brothers, DC. A lot of it's rumors, so we're not 100% sure because we keep hearing you know, third-party accounts of this. But the AT&T yeah. seems to see there's big money here. HBO sees there's big money here. Mm-hmm. And Jeff Johns, Joss Whedon, they seem to be kind of gone now, at least from yeah. this version. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I'm not. I'm not mad about Joss, but Jeff, mm. I, I would like to stick around. Well, I'm yeah. upset about that. I think. Uh, I think. I don't. I don't see him as this Kevin Feige type. I did when he first came in on board. Yeah. Uh, however, like some of the things you hear about him is he was more of the problem than the solution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So as great as his comic book arcs are, as great yeah. as his, like his his knowledge of the, the source material. And yeah. he just, he, he just isn't, much. yeah, he just isn't Kevin Feige. Yeah. And, and that's what they needed. But you know, I wouldn't put him, if I'm Warner Brothers, I wouldn't put him in the Kevin Feige kind of spot. Anyway, no. I want, I want Jeff Johns as head writer. That's what yeah. I, I want him writing. I want him in the story, story room, mm-hmm. writing, putting this together. You know, I want him to be the idea guy, the, the, the jump start, if you will. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I would not give him the Feige seat to be Exactly. Given. I agree with you there. And the thing with Jeff Johns is he wrote Wonder Woman. And I, I, I rewatched Wonder Woman a couple of times this summer. And I think it's better oh, right. than the first Captain America. A lot of people said there are a lot of similarities. I think, yeah. and I love the first yeah. Captain America. I think this is a better movie. I do too. Um, I do but too. I heard that he was a huge obstacle. Apparently he had written his own scenes. He wanted Justice League to be more like a Marvel movie. And yeah. I think that's what you got. If you don't like that style, that's why I think a lot of people didn't like this. Yeah. Well, I think it, you know, it's first of all, it's so out of character from what we've already gotten. This is not DC's first movie, right? This is like the fourth installment in their extended universe. So first of all, it's completely off character. It's uh, it's you know, we're going one way and then Justice League is just a hard left that came out of nowhere. You know, this movie is nothing like they've released thus far. That's going to throw people off right off the rip. And it's just not good. Yeah. in, in, In general, you know. 
so we I think everyone already knows, right? Right. Everyone already knows those the those kind of details about um, you know, who is the problem. So yeah. I don't I'd, I'd rather not focus on the the problems of the original cut. Yeah. Um, yeah. And kind of get into I mean, because those are those are things that need are needed to be told, right? So uh Joss Whedon on set, Ray Fisher, uh Jeff Johns with you know, overcrowding David Ayer and writing his own scenes for that. Those are issues that are don't need to be spoken about. Um, and I do want to talk about them, but I just want to get over uh, on a yeah, couple of other things. I, yeah, I, I want so, to see Zach's vision and what we've seen, especially with, but the, it's hard to almost talk about DC without talking about Marvel, but you look at the Russo brothers did, the three films they did, when they have a vision and you let them be, whether it was Winter Soldier, Civil War, the two films, it's good. It's really good. Yep. Well, the Chris Nolan did. What do you want to do? Let um, him do his thing. Yeah. Right. Let the man work. You hired him to do a job. Let the man do the job. I and that that's uh, I I hate when people studios do this. You mm. hire somebody to do a job. You have references. You have their um resume, if you will. Right. You know the style he works in. You know what he does. You decided to hire him. Well, let the man release his movie. You yeah. know. I understand exactly. that you know things happen inside his life, and that's why he was really gone. But either way, they still like to touch and, you know, fix and, oh, well, you can't do that and nitpick. And, you know, the studio likes mm-hmm. to, to butt their nose into everything. Yeah. You know, and Mar- Marvel's never Marvel's not above that either, though. No, so no, of people, course not. By all means. Yeah, sure, yeah. No, but yeah. they do. But they are better about it. Right. You just yeah. gave three perfect examples. Right. Winter Soldier, <laughs> Infinity War and Endgame. So yeah, Ruth and brothers let them do their thing. So for for the for the Snyder Cut for the four part series that we'll be getting what are you most what are you which character what aspect or whatever else you know plot details what are you most excited to see redone that you didn't think got justice uh got justice hey, the yo. first time <laughs> i'll be honest, well like everyone it was cyborg um yeah. he was supposed to be the heart of the movie but i got to say even though we've seen a little bit in the the Snyder cut trailer the letter code trailer the Flash seems to be acting different. He seems to be yeah. acting like that one line he gives at the end of the trailer. He's not looking as goofy or as yeah. comical. No. He seems like, look, look, this guy's yeah. destroyed a lot of people. Yep. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I'm kind of curious to see what they're going to do with the Flash. Is he going to be just a comic relief? Yep. Or is he going to have, you know, it seems like there's some serious stuff with the Flash. It looks like he's in the Speed Force. And yes. part of me doesn't even want to yeah. guess what that is because I'm like, I don't want to, like, overthink it too much and, you know. I, I think the plan is they're they're on we're on the road to Flashpoint, right? This was yeah. like I don't think the comical thing was like original. I don't think that was Snyder had any intentions of doing that whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I think that was a hundred percent weed in the whole joke jokester, you know, comical guy. Mm-hmm. I don't think that was meant to be. I think we'll see a more serious side, like you had said, and I think we'll get glimpses. I think this is the starting point of Barry's journey into learning about the speed force and learning about his powers and leading up to flashpoint you know right. this is our first little taste of it and then bam flashpoint comes and then you know what i'm saying we go from yeah. there um, and i think go ahead oh uh so no i i agree with both of you in the sense that so barry allen is known to be a comic not a comic yeah, but that is true yeah he's a very light-hearted person yeah, yeah. but i mean it was almost like forced upon. Yes, it wasn't. Yes. It didn't feel natural. Like not at all. <laughs> quip. Not it was like all. it was like ugh. Yeah. Like you're just trying to be like. Yeah. What was it Dostoevsky? Yeah, like, yeah. Like the, just, yeah. Just <laughs> so like so unnecessary. There were just things that that didn't rub me the right way, or Correct. or that that you made him into so much of a coward to go like he had never. I mean, yeah, I yeah. we got scenes in the Suicide Squad where he's taken out a- uh, uh, A villain. Uh, <laughs> a, no, a, a gang of villain. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, a whole yeah. crowd. Oh, yeah, yeah, because Captain Boomerang had a bunch of dudes with yeah. him. Yeah, and then, and then all of a sudden, now he doesn't, you know, now he doesn't know what to do and he's- Yeah, he's freezing up freezing. and, oh, I don't like bugs and, you yeah. know, yeah, I don't like that uh, I, But I'm interestingly interested enough- in, lightheartedness of him because Barry is in fact he's not like the joke guy but he is very lighthearted mm-hmm. he's very um bright you yeah know? he's a very bright guy so I, I see exactly what you're saying I, I always saw like I don't know if you guys remember the show Friends Chandler Bing's personality that kind of like you know throwing a quip type thing 
whereas in the Justice League, he seemed like an idiot. Like he was always falling, yeah. tripping over, yeah. coward, a bit of a coward. Yeah. yeah. And it seems like every character is going to be different. Batman, just that one line Ben Affleck gives, like that's not the same Batman we saw in Justice League, or at least in the uh, Justice League. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Serious, uh, intense, yeah. focused. Yeah. Right. And that's the Batman that Zach does well. Yeah. yeah. That, I think Zach's a perfect fit for Batman and Aquaman. I think yeah. he would uh, with Aquaman. I would like to see that, honestly. No, and I think, I think, but <laughs> so Aquaman, uh, it could go either way, right? Yeah. Because, because I mean, you get, uh, he's the one who kind of did start the, that, that bro, yeah. like, that, yeah, that, that bro yeah. Aquaman yeah, rather yeah. than the royalty Frat Aquaman. Boy. Yeah, so, I'm not a fan of all that. Uh, there's, like I said, and we said this on the intro, I know you weren't here, but there isn't one formula that works for each league member. Yeah. Like it's a different formula yeah. that makes them who they are. Yeah. And you need to you need to balance it perfectly like Avengers and, and, yeah. and Joss Whedon did. I don't know yeah. how. So while we were having that conversation, this thought came to mind and I, I we ran out of time for me to say it. But I think... When doing an extended universe with characters like this, these are these aren't just one time characters. These are characters that have been around for decades now. Yeah. They have depth. They have real personalities, real traits. I think an individual solo movie for each one of these characters is necessary before you can yeah. do the team up. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah. Justice League is a perfect example of it. It's a complete mess. When you bring in Flash, you know literally nothing of him. You bring in Wonder Woman, we know half of a scene of her because of the, the doomsday fight. And that was just a fight. We know yeah. nothing of her. Aquaman, we literally know nothing about him. Most people don't know his name, nothing. You know, I, it's a jumbled mess and you can tell. Yes. Yeah. I think solo movies are a necessity when doing yeah. an extended universe of this caliber. Right. I, and, yeah, no, I agree. Um, apparently Zach's always thought that the studios had decided, oh, let's like Warner Brothers said, oh, let's let's get to the Avengers, like our version of the Avengers. And then they threw all these characters. Apparently, Zach gave an interview a couple of years ago where he said, no, that's how you wanted to do it. That's why it's four hours. He wanted to sort of do it through Bruce Wayne. Like, OK, who, who's this Flash person? You know, they set that up in BBS. Yeah. Like, wait, who's that? Who's that? Instead of doing the movie, you Bruce Wayne is introduced to Flash. He's introduced to Aquaman. And yep. by four hours, you can tell that there was a lot of story there. And then from there, they kind of had their own movies. It was going to be like a spin-off type thing. And I'm like, I'm, now I'm curious. That's why it's four hours. And I, and that, and that is. I think that is absolutely perfect, right? Batman is, out of all the League members, is by far the most known. Everybody yeah. knows Batman, right? So Batman can represent us, the viewer. Are you looking at the hat? I I am. I took the hat. <laughs> uh, Batman is known by everybody. Right. So he can represent us, the viewer, by, like you said, who's this flash person? Who's this? And he's also the detective of the group. If anybody's going to discover who everybody is within the Justice League, it's Batman. Right. Yeah. I think that's absolutely perfect. And I would have loved to see that. It's a different uh, way of coming across it than Marvel did. It's an original way to come across it. And I would absolutely adore seeing that. But like you said, and like I said, the studio always has to put their grubby little nose into things yeah, yeah. and don't let these creators create. Right. And that's the problem. Um, <clears throat> agreed. Agreed. I, I, I did not, you know, I didn't, I didn't read that or I didn't see that, that interview. So now I'm going yeah, to send that to me. Yeah. yeah um, you another me. interesting thing, um, if I may, Yep. That whole sequence with uh, we were in the movie DC uh, Steppenwolf, but now we know it's Dark Side or okay. when he's young, what's he called? Uxos when he's young. That Uxos, was like yeah. a 20, 25 minute sequence or at least 15 to 20. There are rumors, but that's a long sequence. We only saw like 10 seconds in the movie. And right. I'm like, that'd be kind of cool if they did like, you know, the first Lord of the Rings movie opens where they do talk about the battles of Middle Earth. Like yep. the yep. fact that the Justice Lee Snyder cut just starts with a 20 minute battle, like saving Private Ryan or yeah. uh, Gladiator. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, what is this? That, that, oh, yes, like an end game caliber opening scene. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, I'm all about that. And, and, uh, and I mean, we know from 300 that Zach does action. the battle. Action. The battle. So that, and see, that's, this is my main problem. Snyder brings so much to the table, but yeah. I. He's, I don't think they put him in the right position. I don't yeah. think he's where he should be. I think Snyder should be producing. I think Snyder should be a head, um, a head executive in it, right? Mm -hmm. But not main director, not like he's. Yeah, uh, you know, that's because you have a problem with his overall 
I do. His, his overall whole, style, absolutely. No, more more than his style, though. You you have a problem with his vision of the DCEU. You don't even like I, his, his Batman casting. I so, don't. No, I don't like his casting. I like I. We were just having this conversation. All of these heroes, with the exception of Batman and maybe Aquaman. All of these members are very lighthearted, uh, charismatic characters. Yeah, yeah. Superman, Flash, Wonder Woman. They're all very people friendly, ex- eccentric, you know, charming, friendly people. Zack yeah, Snyder yeah. does not specialize in that. <laughs> Zack yeah, Snyder yeah, specializes true, true. in dark and gloomy. You can clearly mm-hmm. see it if you watch Man of Steel. We would just yeah. literally, I'm going to repeat exactly what I said in the intro. Superman is, is, a prime example of all this. He's the Boy Scout. He's the most friendly, the most charming, the most interactive with the people, yeah. right? But in Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman, we see him isolating in like Antarctica, right? Just by himself. He can't. He doesn't know how to talk to people. He's all like awkward. And Batman vs Superman, he's just the biggest downer on the planet. He's like I, once again isolated in the middle of the Arctic, like dragging a yacht through mm-hmm. a frozen. See, you know what I'm saying? Superman yeah, is a person. And here's the thing. Kid. I don't know if you come around to it because I, I was like you. I'm like, well, that's not who Superman is supposed to be. But I can't admit, I, I, I can't doubt that I still kind of like that kind of, not to get it downer, but like kind of post 9-11 look at it. Like if Superman <laughs> were real, people would freak out. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I kind of like that because I love the Chris yeah. Reed Superman and the yeah. animated series. Like, you know what? Maybe this is. I and you know. what I understand exactly what you're saying. That you're did right. Right. my interest. It did. You were 100 percent correct as well. That did peach peak my interest. The whole worshiping Superman, the making him like a god, looking at the mm. way people look at him, and I get that 100. percent But mm. there needs to be Superman trying to correct that, right? Like yeah, talking exactly, yeah. Like not just like floating. You remember that scene where they're all like reaching for him? And he's just like floating. Looking See, I love that shot. I love that it's shot. It's a great too. shot, but I it's love so out shot. of character. Superman <laughs> yeah. doesn't look down on us. He doesn't look at us like yeah. we're insects. Superman, first and foremost, is a guy from Kansas. You know what I'm saying? I and, think you, you that that scene right there is a Rorschach test because I always saw it the other way. I saw it as like I think he's it kind of looks like he just arrived, maybe. So there's two ways of looking at it. Is he looking down? Are you are you looking up at him? Like it, 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 there's and not only that, like apparently the whole thing of him pulling the chain. Supposed yeah. to be, you know, Zach's a big Christian imagery fan of like Christ carrying the cross, and he's like, kind of. Is that what that was? Oh, like, you know. yeah. wow. So I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up. Is that he has a lot of uh, like Christ, Christian, like imagery in his. Yeah. Like you can yeah. clearly tell that most of the time Superman is being depicted. Oh yeah, yeah, as, yeah. You absolutely yeah. see that. Yes, so, absolutely. 100%. But but I don't think it's like a like he doesn't use it as like a. He doesn't push it on you, right? Yeah. It's more or less like for, like, like okay, if I can you see it, it. You notice it, yeah. But it's right. it's yeah. not. I mean, he's not writing it into the story that Superman is actually Jesus Christ. No, no, of course not. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have no idea if Zach is even religious. He, I think he might just like the artwork. There are a lot of people who yeah. aren't religious, but they love the artwork of Christianity yeah. and might want to, you know, yeah. use that. And it, you know, and again, like you said, it is a beautiful scene. It's a beautiful shot, and I it really did catch my attention. But it's. Yeah. I can't ignore, like so, like you said, it's the perception thing, right? Yes. I saw it as so much out of character that it just completely threw me off. So yeah, you're right. Me, yeah, you're right. You know? So okay. So with that being said, then mm-hmm. how much? So uh, you know, reports came out that uh, additional photography uh, is now in. You know, so Joker and Deathstroke are now being uh, included in his That'd additional photography. So what are your thoughts on that? What would you like to see that? Like, where do they fit into uh, a Snyder Cut Justice League film? So here's what's interesting. He had done a panel a couple of years ago, and this is before there were, you know, talks of the Snyder Cut. And he just laid out what he – he had written a completely different story mm. that was never filmed. Warner Brothers said, no, no, this is a little too gloomy. It involved maybe Darkseid and Lois Lane. So then he wrote a second draft. That's what he filmed. Yes. And then, you know, we all know about the rewrites. So I think – with the reshoots, first of all, I think it's a couple of things. One, it's a four-hour movie, and to might not work if you just cut it like in four pieces. You're going to need transitional scenes to kind of end each episode and start a new episode. I think he's doing that, and I'm also thinking that original script. I have to. It's a wonderful panel. I don't. I don't even know what the panel was for. It was for a different movie, 
of Zack Snyder's. And he just talks about, oh, I had this completely different script written. Right. That to write the second one, that's what I filmed. I think he's going back to that first script. Okay. And he's pulling in, you know, I think he's going to give Batman his own arc. There are rumors, again, these are rumors that it's going to involve the death of Joker. This, or, uh, sorry, the death of Robin. Yes. And yes. that's all going to tie in. Like, he has his own arc. Barry Allen has his own story. Um, and I think this is part of the Batman story that he never got to tell. Yeah, and yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It's four hours. It might be that each episode is like 65 minutes, maybe an hour and 10 minutes. It might yeah. be more than four hours. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. think it might be kind of cool if he's allowed to breathe and take his time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, you think Warner Brothers doesn't want a fifth episode if he can do one hypothetically, you know, if he stretches it out? Yeah, yeah. They want the money. They want the subscribers. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the Suicide Squad thing, it's interesting because apparently Harley Quinn might be in it. I don't know how much, but... I think it'll have to do with the death of Robin yep, and yep. the death of Robin tying into him recruiting down new people. There's a line in this version in the justice league. I don't know if it's in the original version. And Diana says, we're asking people we don't know to sacrifice themselves for us. And Bruce is like, I know that's how this works. And it's kind of like cold. And yeah, I yeah. wonder if that's going to connect with the death of Robin. Like, is he now yeah. prepared to bring in new people, especially Barry Allen, who's kind of a kid and put them in a situation where they might not- die. I was getting I that kind of vibe, that kind of Batman taking Barry under his wing kind of vibe. Yeah. I was getting that. And uh, this Ben Affleck's Batman is supposed to be what, like 10 years into it or whatever. 20. He, 20. Yeah. He's been Batman for a long time at this yeah. point. So, yeah, it's fair to assume. And we've already seen the, the Robin suit. So we know it for in fact it did happen. So it's fair to assume that something along those lines and, is what we will see. And if 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 Zach didn't want us to pinpoint the costume bruce would have just walked right by it yeah yeah but he yeah. stops and and pays, pays attention to it yes so yes. i think that like a lot of his driving force is you know the his failures from the past yes right yep. and yep. now he, yep. he he sees an opportunity where you know maybe he can do the team thing right yeah. this time i'm guessing a lot of flashbacks on batman's end you know interesting uh, some you guys but that's Dick Grayson, apparently. Zack Snyder's not, not, not Jason Todd. So I'm like, I did like, oh, know oh, that, oh. yeah. Yeah, which is it, it's strange. Yeah, yeah. I, he might, you know, to all we know, he couldn't, he might not be dead. It might not be the death of Robin. It could yeah. just be, you know, it could be something similar, right? Dick Grayson, um, Joker beats him near to death. He lives, yeah. comes I back, think decides he, to be Nightwing now. I think you know? he did confirm that he's dead, though. I'm pretty did sure. We, did we get it? Apparently, it was brutal, and Jeff Johns didn't like yeah. the way he'd done it. Yeah, no, that was so really violent spoilers, is. just in case that apparently yeah, yeah. Joker burned him to death. Like, just there was yeah. nothing but flesh left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so no, it was in fact death. But yeah. Um, so I think that, like Marvel does all the time, right? You're not going to tell the exact same stories that the comic books tell yep. because you still want, and you know, some, some creative, sort of originality. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the multiverse allows you to do things here yeah. that. Yep. You know, that that don't necessarily have to be connect like the exactly to the source material because yeah. there is a multiverse. And I personally, do you watch Titans? No, I'm okay. going to now. It's on HBO Max. It just yes. I, I didn't get the DC app. So I know it's on HBO Max now or it's coming to HBO Max. But go ahead. Right. They tell a good Dick Grayson story there. Okay. So you don't need to tell, you know, instead of jason todd being dead in the film yep. right killed dick grayson that way your your options are open now yeah um yeah. and you don't have to tell the same exact stories because now it looks like titans is going to be getting into some some red hood stuff like yeah. you're they're looking to tell a lot of different stories yeah um and instead yeah, of near simultaneously at that yeah too. so you're going to be confusing a lot of people yeah i don't think that's necessarily the like why they killed dick grayson i just yeah. think that's why is what Zack Snyder wanted to do? Well, you know, my original guess when I first saw that shot, I thought that was Tim Drake. I didn't think it was Jason oh. Todd, nor did I think it was was um um Dick Grayson. I thought it was Tim Drake due to the the um he has the um what do you call these the, the gauntlets? Gauntlets, yeah, gauntlets, yeah. if you I will. Think, yeah. Yeah, you know, and he had a kind of a staff type weapon type mm, deal. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking it was Tim Drake, I, honestly. And I, I want to see Tim Drake. I'm glad That'd it wasn't crazy. him because that Robin is dead. I would love to see Tim Drake. Yeah. I would love it. So, it's a great Robin. Batman. Also, you good? No, no, no. First, because mine's going to take us down a different road. Okay. Because <laughs> it's also very possible that when they make these movies, they know that the average person, when they think of Robin, they think of Dick Grayson. 
Absolutely. And the problem with these movies is you can't, it's hard to tell. Okay, first it was Dick Grace and then Jason Todd and then Tim Drake and then I don't know who the fourth, fifth ones are. Uh, uh, they're like, okay, we'll, we'll pick the one that everyone knows and we'll just make it about that one. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Fair From enough. Storytelling- yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, if you ask me, I, if if I had to guess, I would imagine yes, most people bro. don't know uh, Robin's real name. You yeah. know, I would yeah. imagine most people don't know his name is Dick Grayson. They yeah. just know Robin. from the '60s show, like because his name was. Uh, oh yeah, Dick yeah, Dick. true, <laughs> true. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't even oh, think yeah. of that. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, those, those people were probably gone right by yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so two things, two things here. So would you would you want to see a director's cut of Suicide Squad because of the the way it ties Ooh, into interesting. Justice League uh, and or the original vision for both films would have fit together in one cohesive way? Um, I have no doubt that the people at HBO there's a lot of buzz about the Snyder cut. I yeah. guarantee you that went from 30 million to 70 million, like you talked about justice, was because they have algorithms tracking how many people are talking about and they're like we could get a lot of subscribers. I guarantee you that is being discussed right now. Because they're like, okay, well, we can make money with this. Well, what do we do after Justice League? The Snyder, you know, it's already made. We give 20, 30 million again to David Ayer. People want to see it, even if it's not good, people want to see it. Yep. Yeah. If the Snyder cut works, yes. On the table. After yep. the Snyder cut happening, I think anything is possible. Is it a guarantee? Yeah, no. Seriously. Yeah. But if people react positively, a lot of people didn't like Jared Leto's Joker for fair reasons. But if he's good in the Snyder cut. cut, people might like, you know what? I want to see that Joker. Yeah. I want to see what he had originally yeah. planned. We yep. keep hearing it's a completely different, it's not like re- completely different film. Suicide Squad I is just think it's on the table. It's Suicide Squad is just as impa- apparent as Justice League is. Mm-hmm. Like when you watch it, you can clearly tell, clearly, this is not the movie. This is right. an this a uh, Suicide Squad. You can question if that's even a movie when you watch it. Like, yo, is this like seriously? It's it's Suicide Squad's a much bigger mess than Justice League was. So, yeah. if this whole Snyder cut works, I think I think Suicide Squad is very likely. Right, and you very can, likely get people excited for the new one, all kinds of stuff. You know, mm-hmm. and the now with the now because so David Ayer was not allowed to touch, alter really do much with his version because it was not his, yeah. right? It's yeah. not, he he never owned it or anything like that. Yeah. So now he has gone and said, you know, he's seen it. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he keeps showing different little like tidbits here and there. Yep. So it just signals that he is working with someone at Warner Brothers or they're at least talking, yes. right? Because yeah, yeah. yeah. it, it never progressed this far before. Yeah. He would just- he would just be on Twitter saying, well, this is what it could have been. This is what it yeah. was. This is Baba, you know, yeah. now he's, now he's seen something. Now he's, you know, now he's involved and yeah. it just seems like it's yeah. getting closer and closer. So I think what that is, is, you know, he threw the fish hook in the water, right? Now he's waiting yeah. for a bite. If you get a bite, all right, Warner Brothers, we're going to, we'll, we'll, you get a bite, we'll green light this, yeah. you know? So get, get all in the waters. And go back to something you said, Tyler, at the beginning, COVID doesn't look like it's going away. No. And you have <laughs> No, $100 million dollar movie sitting on a shelf. You have Wonder no. Woman, two hundred million dollar movie sitting on a shelf. Hey, yeah. we need product. We need to make money. Yeah. Why don't we do a Snyder or a, a, an Iron Cut? Yeah. You know, yeah. we'll do that. Yeah. We'll make that the new thing. The Justice League right now is the only thing that is guaranteed to come out next year. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else is up in the air. We might go back into lockdowns. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and yeah. right now theaters are closing. So even if movies do come out, it's like where are you going to watch them? AMC's closing. Yeah. All this, and. It might, and there, you know what? Snyder Cup might change another thing. And it I've heard change. rumors about this again. It's all rumors that they might do the solo movies and then just do the Justice League together as a series. I'm like, you know, like another <laughs> yeah. four I hour movie. Like that. Yeah, do it, break it down into fours and really give us Justice League. Yeah. Con- you know, People- that makes a lot of sense to me because a Justice League story is huge or yeah. should be huge, at least. Yeah. You know, I was a big fan of it being a two parter mm-hmm. originally. I was very uh, happy with that decision. And I was like, great, because that really gives us a chance to flesh them. Because at this time, I already had known that they weren't doing solo movies before Justice League. Right. We we knew that yeah. for a fact. The only one who was getting a solo was Superman. Yeah. Uh, I believe at the time they said Wonder Woman was supposed to come out as well before Justice League, if I'm not mistaken. It came out a few months before. Right. Yeah. But um, I'm saying at the time they were telling us Wonder Woman was going to come out 
before Justice League the two parter, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. Really, yeah. So because it, it still came out a couple months before yeah, the first one. It, yes. Yeah, exactly. So it, I think that was the best bet to break it down like that, or even better, break it down into four hours because we still don't know these characters yet. A couple of them, they don't have right. their solo movies, they don't have their introductions yet. So uh, you know, making Justice League a long four hour or two parter is, you know, the best p- decision if you ask and, me. And one thing that I thought on the trailer that caught my attention was the nightmare sequence. We see it again. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. And I think there's a huge chunk of the film. Yep. So do I, from what I, I've read. I'm, that's some, that actually might be a thing. I might be not character wise, but the thing I'm most interested to see, they yes. set that up in BBS yeah. and we got more yeah. scenes coming now. I'm like, yeah, I'm, yes. kind of excited. I'm curious. Then, uh, that's yeah. for sure. I would say that for me, the nightmare sequence is what I'm most excited for. Yeah. Uh, to see what is what is actually going on because, I mean, it when I first, I mean, that's where a lot of people got mad with the Batman character. Yeah. Is yeah. is seeing him using firearms. Yeah. I mean, there's another sequence, but it's not actually really a gun. Uh, but that's where a lot of people got aggravated with Batman yeah. or didn't think that it stuck true to the tone, the but that's, scene. but that's not, that was not the vision, right? So you, his, Zach's whole portrayal of this was to these characters are, so you've heard the, the, the saying, right? Superman's gone dark side. Yeah. Right. So these are Batman. This is Superman at their worst. Yeah. Right. These yeah. aren't, this isn't Batman from like year four. Yeah. This is Batman at his yeah. dark side. Yeah. Right. Dark side is here. Yeah. He's yeah. a, he's a tyrant. Uh, I can never say that word. A tyrant. T- ty- it was a tyrant, right? He's controlling the world, controlling Superman. Yep. He's orchestrated all these things that we, have we, led to this. And like, that's, that wasn't real at the time. Yeah. yeah. Right. That was yeah. a nightmare sequence. Uh, yep. So yeah. people's problem with it always the, aggravated me. The, well, the problem, I'll tell you what the problem is. We haven't seen Batman outside of that. That's the first introduction to Batman at his worst. Of course, yeah. people are going to get mad. You introduce us to Batman at his worst point in time in his career, you know, at his lowest point. That's where yeah. we get introduced to him. How could we possibly <clears throat> like build any love for this character? And I'm going to say something that's going to upset comic book fans. You're right. In the comics, he doesn't kill. But they always write Batman in the situations where he figures it out. You know what I mean? If you ever see a cop like, oh, he'll figure it out like because he's Batman. And really, it's almost kind of like they write him into situations where he's able to save the day. And the first time they violated that was in The Dark Knight. Save Gordon's kid. He killed Harvey Dent, you know? Yeah. And I like that. I'm like, he didn't mean to kill him, but he had no choice. And yep. I'm like, sometimes, especially comic book writers, they don't put characters in situations where they have no choice. A lot of people didn't like it when Superman would kill Zod. And I thought that was a great scene. What is he going to do? He was trying to stop him. You know, he's in a situation where he didn't want to do that. And that scream Henry Cavill gives, I thought that was a great, because they pushed Superman in the corner. The comic book writers sometimes are afraid to push their characters. Yeah. Instead of giving them an easy out. Oh, Batman already figured this out because he's a detective. It's like, well, what did he put? This is a Bruce Wayne who does not give an F. Yeah. He's lost Robin. He's, He's in his 40s. He's drinking a lot of alcohol. He's taking a lot of pain meds. He's not happy. And yeah. right now, and especially in just Snyder cut, he is now responsible for saving the world. And there's no Superman. Yeah. Right. You know, like, that's great. He's at his worst yeah. point, And now he's gonna he's gotta face a threat he's never faced before. That's yeah. great for us, right? Yeah. The guys that everybody we already know Batman, yeah. but for everybody else watching who doesn't know Batman, did. What is going on? Yeah, the, at the worst point, you know, you show him at his worst point. Everybody who doesn't know Batman like that, what is going on? Why is Batman yeah. using machine guns? Why is it? Why is the Batmobile just loaded with missiles and heavy <laughs> weaponry? You know, um, <laughs> it, it, it's it's a little crazy. <laughs> um, so, would you be a fan of an HBO uh, Ben Affleck Batman? Um, yes. And uh, after I saw the Pattinson trailer, which I thought the trailer was cool, I was not crazy about him. Really? Uh, really? Um, I, I, I don't Wait, like the way his costume tell. looks. I don't like, I think, you know what, it's, it, I think it's the size. He looks like a kid. And before everyone says anything, well, he's supposed to be a young Batman. He is four years older than Christian Bale was in Batman Begins. He just has this thing where he looks, 
and I don't know if the rumors about them shutting down photography because he was out of shape, but Ben Affleck looks like a grown ass. He looks like he can beat up 25 people. Yeah. Um, fair enough. yeah. Love. And, and Ben Affleck, by the way, is a good writer and director. If you've seen Argo, if you've seen The Town, if you've seen Goodwill Hunting, yeah. I have no doubt that he was either fired or pushed out of that role. I would love to see what he and Joe Imagine Yellow and Jared Leto. Absolutely. I would, I'm more interested in seeing that than I am the Matt Reeves film, which I'm still excited about. I'm still going to go see it and wear our pants to get accent, but I would love to see that. I would love to see yeah. Ben Affleck do his own thing, write his own story, you know, story structure. Yes. Hell yeah. And I, yeah. I guarantee yeah. that's on the, uh, did you know? I know you said justice. You didn't like his casting. You said, yeah, no, well, I, we are polar opposites on this. Yeah. I despise Ben Affleck as Batman. Okay. Hate it. I can't stand it. I have a real problem <laughs> with no. Okay, so Christian Bale, when Batman Begins came out, I was about nine years old, right? Yeah. So I didn't know him outside of Batman. I have this real problem when I see characters, especially my favorite heroes. I mm. see actors that I know from other places, from silly places I, at that, playing I, my favorite character. Ben Affleck is by far the biggest offender of this. I have really? seen Ben Affleck be too goofy too yeah, many true. times in too many different things for him to be Batman to me. And I can't ignore it no matter how hard I try. No ma- And also, I can't ignore the damaged tattoo on Jared Leto's oh, form. Yeah. I'm not a fan of Jared, Jared Leto's the Joker. I'm not. But no. I still would kind of want to see get yeah. both him and Ayer have said, oh, we haven't seen what we're really planning. I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I don't blame Jared. I just want to get this. Me and him have had this conversation a million times. I don't blame Jared Leto. I don't think his performance was bad at all. I don't think the way he went with the character. I thought it was pretty good. It was um he went more on the psychotic side of it and kind of took it, you know, a little too far. But I don't blame him. I blame the costume designer. Yeah, That's yeah. the problem with the Joker is the way he looks. It's not yeah, yeah, his yeah, acting. Yeah, yeah. It's and, not and, who and, he is. It's the way he looks and how he walks and, you know, and him also came. makes it worse is that we just saw an amazing Joker performance from that two just times makes over. it worse. Like <laughs> two times over. We got Heath Ledger yeah. and then Joaquin Phoenix came in. It and was then, amazing. Was at, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. No. That's that's I want that. That's what yeah, I want. I want I want Matt Reeves to like lean towards that kind of if Joaquin Phoenix and Patterson, I promise they'll play off each other just like that Bale cool. Ledger did. I guarantee it. I would yeah, love that'd be, it. I, that'd be cool. I don't know. That's what I want. <laughs> I, um, I love it. Since we're probably going to run over time. OK, um, of course. So there has been this is something that I want to talk about after, but I'm just going to include it now. So I'm sure you guys have heard that Johnny Depp is now been ousted as a Warner Brothers employee. So yes, he, he yes, will no yeah, longer, yeah, yep. he will no longer be working with Warner Brothers uh, yes. on the, as Grindelwald, yep. which, so as Amber Heard going to be staying is, uh, oh, so is, is I she heard go- talks of her being gone. Right. So did now yeah. do they, do they cut ties with both or now they've freed up, um, Merit to stay. Yeah. So, I, I, so from what I've seen, they wanted her gone as well. From what I've seen, they were aiming to get rid of the both of them uh, for separate reasons. You, from what I seen. So I, you know, I don't know. I, she doesn't bother me. I don't. Yeah. Know, right. But when you when you've like when you've had such a public like malfunction. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Then it's hard it's hard for people to like want to work with you or True. like some of the things that they did to each other were just downright dirty, like yeah, very, yeah. very bad. I don't know. I wasn't, and I wasn't yeah. paying attention to that. I, I think, you know, people are dysfunctional. We've all, there are yeah. times in my life we've all done or said things that were stupid. We didn't mean them. I mean, not as bad as that, but I'm a big believer in forgiveness and second chances. I don't know if she's sorry or if he's sorry for stuff that happened but um look at rdj he had a pretty bad drug uh, career, yeah. um so can you guys give me an example because i'm not really sure like what most, between the two of them that so so most of it is like stuff i i would have to tell you off oh because like so it's, I, it, it involves 
lots of drugs. Okay. Lots of- so the, my question is, what happened that now Warner Brothers is involved? Like they're getting divorced, right? And yeah, things get ugly, but like They've something in- crazy has to happen for Warner Brothers to be like, all right, well, we can't work with you guys anymore because the way you're acting. You see right. what I'm saying? So they, they were in court. Uh, the court ruled in favor of Amber Heard. Okay. Um, for some, for uh, I'm not exactly sure what this particular trial was about, but I mean, she's done thing like she, for instance. I'll, this is what the this is what I'll say about it. Okay. And then this will give you an idea. <laughs> yeah. She posted a picture of Johnny Depp's like his work. Like I forget what the the context of the picture was, but it, he was passed out. Yep. He had fallen on the ground, like yep. in a suit. Yep. He was like passed out, um, unconscious. Yep. There was two fat lines of coke, like still railed up on the on the um, on the table. Okay. Giant glass of whiskey. Yep. And like his drug box was yep. open, and she said, "Like this is a Tuesday for me." Yeah. And like, you know what I mean? Like, no, no. That, Johnny I see Depp's why like not a normal guy. person. Yeah. No, I no. see why Warner Brothers got involved after something like that. That's just one. That's like yeah, a yeah. small thing. And, yeah. and look, here's the thing. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a rich, famous person. Well, not yet. We will be all three of us. Ah, you yeah. beat me but to it. I'm have, just about to say that when when people <laughs> get that rich and powerful, the stories like not to get into too much about this. Give an example: the stories about R. Kelly that came out. It's like, dude, what yeah. makes you yeah. think you could yeah. act, yeah. Like, act that? like that? When you yeah. when you money and people yeah. love you, you think you can do whatever you want. Of and course, absolutely. It, I would not doubt that she probably has grievances too. Although, like you'll said, you'll tell him about some of the stuff she did. Yeah, um, he they're... probably he is known to be weird and also realize there's a huge age difference. He's young. He's like yeah. in his mid 50s. Yeah, he's probably yeah. like I'm giant Depp. I can do whatever I want. OK, so that being said, all right, I get it. Why Warner Brothers would step in and remove them. Luckily for them, Mira really isn't that big. Right. No. Like, not too many people are tripping about Mira. Right? No. So Warner Brothers can't do away with her and it won't be this big uproar. You know what? I, I wouldn't mind yet, though. Yeah, they have not yet. I wouldn't mind seeing um, Amelia Clark step in as Mara. Ooh, throw, really? Throw, I can see throw, that. Throw, I can a, see that. throw um, some red hair on her. Yeah, yeah um, whatever. chick from um, Game of she, Thrones. Yeah, Game yeah, of Thrones. absolutely. Yeah, uh, Mother of Dragons. Yeah, yes. absolutely. How about this? That. Is it possible? The second uh, uh, film didn't do well. What is that? What is that franchise called? Uh, Fantastic Fantastic Beasts. Yes. Yep. And, and then a lot of people already were upset that Giant Depp had replaced um, who, who's the Penguin, Colin Farrell. Yes. Yes. It's possible yes. that a, hey, Aquaman is our most successful film. James yep. Wan and um, uh, the guy who plays Aquaman. Oh my God, I'm, I'm trying to Jason Momoa. Momoa. <laughs> like her. And we yep. don't want to upset yep. these two people because the That's sequel true. will probably make another billion dollars. If yep. we have to cut one of them loose, let's cut Johnny Depp right now because oh, yeah, we don't want to upset. Nobody likes him anyways. Yeah. yeah. No, I we don't want to upset that. Jason Momoa. We don't want to upset a billion dollar franchise because yep. Aquaman 2 is going to be another billion dollar movie. You so think so? Maybe you, it's possible. No, I don't. I don't. I think I think the first one was just yeah. like I think they got lucky, but I don't I think you know, people at first just like there was this big hype for Momoa at the time, right? Yeah. Like, there still is. There, it, there was this big at the time he was big hype, right? And he was that dude, and you know, and but everybody got f- their fill. I don't you see what I'm so. saying. I don't see Aquaman two bringing in well, another. Here's the thing. Up. This comes back to what our topic is: the Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut could reinvigorate the same way Civil War. True. After yeah, all time, true. the Marvel Universe felt whatever, and then Civil War came and right. kind of restarted. <laughs> yeah, the true. Snyder Cut. People yeah. be like, dude, I want to see Aquaman again. I want to see Wonder yeah. Woman again. I want to see Flashpoint. You know. Yeah. Hopefully, dude. I, I God, I hope this works. I if it works. Too. If it works, because this second run for DC looks so promising. The Suicide Squad looks amazing. Black Adam, I, I fantasize oh. about this movie on a regular basis. Oh, my God. I'm <laughs> and so let's excited. not forget, <laughs> The Rock might have played a huge role in this because his manager is the same is his ex-wife, Danny Garcia, is also the manager of Henry Cavill. And yep. he's yep. one of his things was, I want to fight Superman in a movie. It's, I think it was I think yep. Henry Cavill was done. I don't think they yep. wanted him back. I think no. they were going to reboot Superman, but now it's like, hey, Dwayne Johnson is the biggest star. Dwayne Johnson could make a movie about the Teletubbies and it will make money. Yes. <laughs> yep. And if you want Henry Cavill, Cavill. we'll bring Henry Cavill. Yep. yep. I don't mind Henry Cavill. He's not the I problem. Like, I, like, I think the way the character was written and all that yeah, stuff, yeah. those are my problems. But Henry Cavill fits the Boy Scout Superman look. He doesn't. He's great. He, 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 the thing with Superman, you always have to find someone who's kind of leads a good life, whether it's Christopher Reeve or even Brandon yeah. Ralph. Yeah, like you yeah. need to have that kind of like a genuine charm. 
Yeah. 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 Brand, yeah. You know, Brandon Routh really, really got depressed after Superman. Really? Yeah. He was a great, if anybody fits the look, it's him. He he really does. There's a, the look is just perfect. There's also talks of a Brandon Routh HBO. Kingdom, I heard about that. Yeah, Kingdom I heard Come, yeah, Superman. I heard about that. That'd be cool. I'm um, down. I'm down. Because absolutely. So so Brandon, uh, he didn't like turn to drugs or anything. Yeah, yeah. But no. he turned to gaming. Yeah. Uh, and he got depressed and really self isolated. Yep. And played uh, video games a lot because his Superman didn't get a sequel. Yeah. Uh, I bet he's a champion at some Call of Duty right now, though. <laughs> but. So, but he, he really did. It depressed him a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I understand. So that's the thing is like these roles, they're not, they're not just, they're like, you're not, you're not, yeah. You're not just yeah. playing Superman anymore. Like you're, these characters mean so much to so many people. Yep. That's why the, the fandoms are so passionate. Yep. That's why yep. for me, for me personally, like if I didn't have these movies and TV shows and all that stuff to look forward to, like life just doesn't, like sometimes you have bad days, right? But like the fact that I can sit down and like I can watch, uh, what you know, I now now it's a golden age to to be a uh, a comic book fan. Oh yeah, or adaptions yeah. or anything. Absolutely, I can sit and I can pick from so much content to watch. Yeah. Whereas you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was considered a joke. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I say this all the time. If I if I was born around the time my parents were, I would get beat up on a regular <laughs> basis. On a regular basis. I have anime tattoos and some more. I would get beat up on a regular so, basis. <laughs> I'm, I'm five, ten and a half. Yeah, and a half. I was this size when I was 11. Man, I get that half in there, and then with the shoes, I'm five, eleven. I was this size when I was 11. I had one of those really weird growth spurts. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then I just stopped growing. I was like five ten, like from age eleven onwards. Like so I was like always a big kid in class. I'm like, you ain't messing with me. But I remember <laughs> I was a huge fan at that time. There were there weren't good comic book movies. Like I'm, I, I'm thirty three, so I'm I, I think I'm a lot older than you guys are. Yeah, you got a couple but, years on me. I'm twenty seven. So <laughs> Michael Keaton was our Batman because that was a serious yeah. Batman, and yep. then we had the Joel Schumacher films. And I'd be like, uh, oh, uh, I remember uh, a kid uh, being like. I'm not watching Batman forever. I'm like seven, eight years old because it's not my kid and kids didn't care. Like, why do you care? Who's Batman? Yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, it matters to me. That dude's my Batman. Awesome. Again, that's he's awesome. a good actor. Good for you. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what I'm talking that, about. So, true hero. <laughs> my man, true hero. With, uh, so, very, uh, so seamless plug. So, we'll finish the day up with this. Shameless. Shameless. What did I say? <laughs> it's seamless. Seamless. Because it doesn't have that, seams, that kind, man. That kind of works, too, though. Um, That's all right. <laughs> so, Michael Keaton coming back, right? We got the- yeah. Flashpoint, so baby. DC is going to, DC is going to usher in the multiverse, right? And they're mm -hmm. going to, they're going to make some old properties new again, you know, bring that retro vibe and uh, also save themselves from uh, absolute destruction. Because- Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I think this will open a lot of doors. Are you happy that your Batman's coming back? Yeah, and I, I want to see him. And yeah. that is my dream. When I was a kid, I'm like, man, I wish they brought Michael Keaton back. But then you know, we got the Christian Bale films, and then I was like, all right, dude, he's like 60 now. It's yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> rumors are even Batman Beyond is on the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I heard that Another too. Universe, I, they can do oh, the I'm still for it. Um, yes, yes, Batman. yes, I would kill for it, please. Uh, the cool thing with Terry McGinnis is I think he's white in the comics, but you can make him anything because he doesn't yeah, have, yeah, yeah. He, you know, uh, dude, I always thought Terry was like Asian. The, he way he's be, yeah. drawn, the way he's drawn in the show, he looks Asian, but no, you're right, he is a white kid because they do it in the comics. He's he, he's drawn different, yeah. But he, in the show, that's not a character that, like, you know, sometimes they change the race of a character, that's not one that yeah. would really bother me. No, that, that, he's not really from the comics, he's from yeah. the, the animated series, just like Harley Quinn. From yeah. the anime series. Yeah. Um, that, it's funny you bring that up. Thing, God, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's funny that you bring that up because a major problem I have is when they change the race of characters. It's yeah. insane. I couldn't get through. I gave Titans my honest to God try. I really did. But I can't, I couldn't ignore Starfire. It bothered me way too much. Yeah. Starfire is not even human, she's an alien. Why yeah. did you change her into a black person? It drove me insane. It's too much. It I, this black characters just make more stories about yeah. them. Yeah. Just, you know, and, I, and, I, and the funny thing is, I mean, Spider Man is one of my favorite comics. Yeah, I have still to this day never read a Miles Morales story. You, when, oh, I, I remember Miles Morales came out. You know what got me to Miles Morales was that Spider Verse movie. I never cared about yeah. Miles Morales just because uh -huh. he's got brown skin or darker skin like I do. Like that doesn't automatically make him a great character. I still like Peter Parker. 
Yeah. Not because yeah. he's white, but because Kyle's he's Peter Parker. Character, though. I am, Kyle's really is a great yeah, character. Yeah, and now I'm like, dude, this movie, that movie was great. Into the yeah, Spider-Verse, I'm like, I'm getting, yeah, the Miles, I'm getting the game next week. I, oh, oh, me too. By I, far, by, uh, it's, excuse me, one, real quick. Into the Spider-Verse is by far the best Spider-Man movie I've ever seen in my life. I, I love it. Kyle's I, about to backhand you. Look at him get his hand ready. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, love that movie. I am actually with him. So I didn't care. I didn't read any Miles Morales. Or really? I didn't. Oh, I, didn't I, love Miles. I knew who he was, right? Yeah. But I didn't like actively search for his stories. I didn't yep. actively pursue any of his arcs or anything yeah. like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But because, like you said, Peter Parker is just that Spider Man for me. And, oh yeah. Absolutely. Um, I didn't want to see it any other way, yeah. but. That's, you know, I like that when they create a different character. Exactly. Make Multiverse, them black. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That, that's really cool to me. Yeah. But but if Peter Parker came out, you know, in 2022 and Peter Parker was a black or an Asian kid. Right. Yeah. That bothers me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would be the joke. Make that's him Korean. Make Peter Parker Korean and change his name to Peter Park. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, um. <laughs> okay, so the difference between the two of uh, uh, the, us three, yeah. me, I did actively want a black Spider-Man. Growing up, my favorite things were Batman, Spider-Man, and Naruto, right? Okay, no, okay. None of them are black. Not yeah. a single one of them, right? So I always did want a black Spider-Man. I always wanted that. I've always, and so my when Miles came around. He has a full mask on. You don't know. Yeah. Stan Lee said this. Anyone can be Spider-Man. Because yeah. you don't know what the race is. You could be brown, yeah. black, Asian. Yeah. Green, so, blue. When, so when Miles Doesn't came matter. around and like it wasn't Peter just getting changed. Miles is his own character, his own person yeah. from the multiverse. I was excited. So I <laughs> did actively go looking for Miles yeah. Morales stories. And, you know, now the game's coming out. I couldn't. I I think Jesus answered this prayer personally. Yeah. yeah. With that one. Because <laughs> I am excited. I agree. Uh, <laughs> To be fair, you're not going to like this, but I actually did pray that Ben Affleck would come back. So sorry. Oh, about that. God. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I I prayed for that too. So I don't yeah. want him back. I can't. Me do and Ben it have again. me and Ben have similar. Uh, so Ben is actually from our area. Yeah, he is. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I've always I've always attacked. I think that's another ben. problem too. Um, Boston actors tend to do Boston type movies like The Town. I if I see that movie one more that time. Movie. If I <laughs> oh really okay. I, if I ever see the town again, I swear to God, I'm setting up whatever we, building I'm in on I think, fire. I think we have a different kind of story with that <laughs> the, movie. The though. town, I've seen it so many times it's to the point it legitimately makes me angry when it comes on TV. And I think, like I explained to you earlier, I can't ignore it when I've seen actors in too many different things. When they're I hope sp- you haven't seen Daredevil. I have seen Daredevil. So I love that movie. We have a, bit, we have a, oh, you don't know our bit? <laughs> I love that movie. Oh, Shows up. No. Like, Shows how much he watches. Uh, no, so we have a, we have a, so no, Justice actually really loves Ben Affleck's Daredevil. I do, I do, and I'm a big fan of so much. Cut. Cut. Director's cut is good. No, 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 original theatrical. <laughs> really? Love it, <laughs> love it. Okay. Great movie. I'm yeah. a big fan of Schumacher vote. too. No, 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 no. Big fan of Schumacher. No. I liked it. Don't Schumacher. No, in, in all genuine. Legitimate, not just like a joke. I really do like Schumacher's only because like you can clearly tell. Don't take this seriously. Don't get invested yeah. in this. Just watch it and have fun. And right. that's what I'm, I did. With I'm going to back you up. And I'm going to back you up because I've kind of looked at those movies differently. I am going to say some blasphemous right now. I hate the 60s bad and West show. You can't you can't say that you love the 60s show and then crap on the Schumacher films because the Schumacher films are basically a modern interpretation yep. of the 60s show. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what it is. And the same thing with the 60s. I don't take it seriously. I turn my brain off. I might and I just watch and yeah. laugh and it's a picture it, instead of going into it like this is okay. I Batman, you know, you go into it like I'm going to get a laugh out of this. If you didn't laugh when you saw the nipples on Batman's costume, you're dead inside. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, that, that was hilarious. Uh, Those are good actors. Yeah. Clooney's a good actor. Killer's yeah, a good actor. They're not bad can, actors. And, and you can tell, especially with Clooney, that he wasn't taking this seriously either. Mm-hmm. And he's just having fun with it. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. It's just, it's a silly, goofy movie to have fun with. I feel it's like- a little weird that it exists in DC's overall universe universe it's like weird to think about but it is fun i think uh, you know? i think at the time i think still to this day right if you are if you are cast as batman 
you have reached a certain pinnacle in life, right? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, There's really only is. a handful of people yeah. that have been cast as it's Batman. Batman. And That's if you big. if you reach that pinnacle, yeah. You are a different breed of human. <laughs> because, Batman, yeah, uh, you're Batman. You are Batman. Yeah. You are one of yep. six, seven people that have yep. been graced to yep. play this character. Yep. So you you enter. They must have a club that they go to. Or yeah, something. that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> I have said club. something in the last year. Because you have seven already. actors who have played him. I am willing to debate. Oh, this, I think Batman is arguably the greatest fictional American character ever created. Yes, absolutely. So Absolutely. You could, I I think go, only, go back to Mark Twain, all of it. He yeah, is arguably. I, I think the only one who competes with him, and this <laughs> is not 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 as far as what you just said with the Mark Twain thing, but I think the only one I'm talking like heroes, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing, not like Mark Twain type stories, but like, you know, video games, you know, things of that sort, comic uh -huh. books, heroes in general, all that kind of stuff. I think the only one who comes close to Batman is Spider-Man. That's yeah. it. Because they're, they're I mean, essentially, I mean, Spider-Man I mean, is Marvel's Batman. <laughs> Everybody yeah. knows him. Everybody knows his origin. People quote, you know, when people say with great power comes great responsibility, they don't even know where that comes from. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? That's how well-known these characters are, you know? Yeah, no, I uh, I definitely agree. And with what you just said, um, so I've, I heard one this one person say this, and it changed the way I looked at it. They said that you could get them like comic books, like Batman, Superman, all that stuff. Like it's another story, but just like the, and I, I hate to get on anyone's nerves or yeah. bring to it, but like religion, right? Like you could get Jesus Christ and Batman are on like the same level as far as stories go. Like oh. they, they, they're not the same. They're, there's no comparison I'm making, but I like that. People more. know Batman the same way they know Jesus or something because yeah, they, yeah, no, they grew up, they grew up hearing stories about it. Blah, yep. blah. You know, I'm not like saying that religions. No, I, I totally, literally, yeah. well, that, do you know the controversy that happened with the Beatles? Cause John Lennon said, we're at, well, more famous than Jesus. And that created yeah. a huge and issue. Were. But, yeah, but they, they were, were. They really yeah. were. That's the thing. Yeah. They really were. So people know these characters. Like you could honestly get me to believe in Superman faster than you could get me to believe in Jesus. And Jesus. Because <laughs> the, the science is there, I guess. Well, yeah. Right? He's, a, he's just an alien. He's an he's alien who sun. drinks off the sun. Uh, but uh, not for nothing. But if something like that was running around, we'd know by now. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we would have seen that thing come around by now. <laughs> hey, hey, no. hey. Pentagon released stuff in July, and I'm like, dude, why is the government telling us this is real? Like, <laughs> you know, uh, I, um, as far as like Batman goes, it, it's he really is just like on that kind of level. And I know exactly what you're saying, but the, as an actor, if you get cast as Batman, there's a huge, huge pressure on your shoulders, and I think that weighed down on your homeboy there, Affleck, because he was like. Remember that meme that we kept using sad, of him? Sad Affleck. Yeah, sad Affleck. Yeah. That meme. Like, I think playing Batman, all the scrutiny he got, I think there was like even. I think there was just as much praise as he got scrutiny when he played Batman. But I think it might be different now. People and oh, another thing that happened, he was going through a very nasty divorce at the same at time. The time. Yeah. You so watch Scott this thing and you on. see his face is like really fat in some scenes, really skinny. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. a lot going on at the time. Yeah. yeah. And um and so picture this, right? Picture this. You're, all you want to do is go out, get a burger, come home and, and watch some porn or something, whatever you want to do. Okay. Just saying, whatever. Like, Do you but, eat and watch porn? No. Uh, oh, right. no. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but that's all you want to do for the day, yeah. right? Yeah. And you leave your house and people are asking you about your Batman yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Of course. They're just yeah. crowding you every single yeah. day. All you hear is Batman, Batman. Like, the, someone someone looking to get a little bit of tidbit or someone looking to ask you a question yeah like i probably would have drank myself to death too uh, yeah i would have lost my mind absolutely i couldn't handle fame i'm not yeah, this yeah. isn't for fame i have no desire for fame money that's a different story fame yeah, yeah. i'm good i i really i can't handle crowds to begin with i told you there was a bunch of people celebrating that biden one down davis it was only like 100 people i couldn't handle it yeah. i was i was breaking down mentally i was freaking out you know so i don't like I'm not like attacking him personally, right? Yeah, like I'm yeah, not talking yeah. like Ben Affleck's a horrible yeah. person. I can't stand yeah. him. What a piece of garbage. It's just I don't like his performance. I don't See, like how bulky he was. Yeah. Like he seems so like stiff 
Like he, yeah. he's so huge. Like See, I, I actually don't like that move. You know, I don't believe but, that he's a, ma- a master martial artist because he yeah. can barely walk through a door without turning <laughs> sideways. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but here's the thing: going to his performance when he was going through that divorce. I thought you could see the pain when he was as yeah. Bruce Wayne. I thought he brought it into like when you see him like sitting and like looking at his computer, you could like that dude is going through something and it works because Bruce Wayne is always going through something. I yes, thought it was. I, liked it. I did. Absolutely. Um, I see. I see exactly what you're talking about, though. And that warehouse scene for me. Yes. Was so intense. Was probably an hour on that. Probably, the, <laughs> probably one of the greatest um, cinematic moments that I've enjoyed with myself <sighs> okay. right all right and i don't want to <laughs> listen i don't want to i don't want to break it down i don't want to hear about your opinion towards him as a character i'm saying my relationship it. with myself at that moment watching that like something clicked and i was just like yes that, okay. this is what i needed at this exact moment That's yeah, i agree with you there have been times where i've gotten drunk like at home nothing else to do i'll just watch that like 20 times i'll just keep rewinding yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> i just I, I've, yeah, he I've, killed. I've yeah, he you, killed that one guy. Sorry, times. no. He killed all, that one guy. One guy. <laughs> at least twenty people died at the hand of Batman. Like, let's not. Let's not pretend like you didn't see the when, same movie I saw. When, when he throws the the cargo right. container yeah, at the dude, and, and my man's brains are on the wall. That's not a too much to you guys. You don't think that's a force? Hey, the guy can still be alive. Did you see? My, uh, you saw his brains splattered. On, you saw his brain splattered on the wall behind him. No, he's not alive. <laughs> See Zach Snyder's commentary when he did the live viewing of Batman vs Superman, and every no. time Batman killed, he's like, "Oh, don't worry, those guys are all right." Like with a car, <laughs> no, oh, he's just that, like, making oh, "That car it. blew up." No, 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 he's good. He, yeah. He's fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, but no, it's it is what it no. is. But it's that- it's it's a great scene. But I've told you guys a million times, I can't ignore things. I can't. Yeah, no, you're right. Can't you're turn right. off my brain and pretend that things haven't been awful this entire time. And now this one scene makes everything great for me because it doesn't. It, so it, do you like Batman vs. Superman as a movie, at least the no, ultimate cut? No. Oh, no. no. Not okay. even the but, I, like but, the ultimate cut. I didn't like the original but, version. But he's never seen the ultimate cut either. So I, okay. No, I haven't seen the ultimate cut, but I, that I, I'm 100% sure that it will not change my opinion. That being said, okay, I need to go ahead and watch that because I haven't watched it yet um, for whatever reason. So I think HBO it now. was... Oh, it is. Okay. Now they it is. Rid of the the original time, version. That's the only version they're showing. Really? That, at yeah. the time, it wasn't readily accessible for me. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. wasn't like, excited to watch it. So I never pursued watching it. But it, now that it is on HBO and readily, I can just watch it. It I changes. It changes multiple scenes in ways that you go, OK, I understand why that just happened yeah. now. And they thought, yes, right? that's what I heard about it. And they also threw that R rating on it, too, which yeah. will make a difference. It's um, but that's. That's those two factors only add to the issues I have with mm-hmm. the movie. Um, it's supposed a lot of the focus is on Superman for this movie. Yeah. So it having an R rating and that that just means it's going to be darker and gloomier. Yeah. And that's not that an F-bomb in there issue. somewhere. I think that's yeah. it. That was a major issue for me yeah. is how dark and gloomy and depressing everything involving Superman was Batman. I get that. hundred yeah. percent. I would love to see a Snyder Batman movie. Just let yeah. him do his thing with Batman. I'm hundred percent sure he'll do a great job because hey, you guys are right. It is Ben Affleck's Batman is 20 years in. He's at his worst point. Yeah. So and I think they I could have to- emphasized that more because you meet him for the first time. You're yeah. like, wait, why is he killing people? Exactly. Um, it, it, there was no establishing. There's that. like one line <laughs> Alfred says, we have new rules now. Like, you know, he tells up a newspaper, a guy, Brandon, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so like we're playing by a different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. If they, we've always been emphasis, criminals. If you put more emphasis on it, then yes, that on the fact that this is in fact Batman's worst point, and this really isn't who he actually is. Throughout the 20 years of him being Batman, this isn't yeah. how he acted. This is just yeah. things have gone that crazy that that which, he has to act that way. Which is why I wouldn't mind the HBO show being a prequel. And, yeah, to uh, establish those things. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So and by the way, they made him look older in that role. If you see Ben Affleck like now, yeah. like he's yeah. they look, they could easily just use him as he is now to play a younger yeah. Batman. I mean, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, um, yeah, to see it lead up to where they're at now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd watch get that. that out of there. Get what out of where? It's oh, you can was, hear it. Sorry, <laughs> you know, it would be a situation where like if he had killed the Joker, Robin would have lived. 
Yeah. Like it might be that yeah. might be the breaking point. Like I kept saving the yeah. joke or letting him live. Yeah. And I lost my son figure, you know, in a, a in a very familiar Batman story. Yeah. Like that Batman's been through something like that a million times over. Right. I think in that, that maybe if you don't want to do four seasons of it, cause I wouldn't really want to see, four, it's not that I wouldn't want to see it, but I would want it to be, be too much. Yeah. I would want it to be everything I ever wanted. Right. And maybe that is just one or two seasons of, the the death in the family or yeah. killing joke you know yeah. whatever focus on one of those awesome stories draw it out yep. and uh, i think me and him talked about it so would you ever want to see a batman show from the perspective of the joker i what, oh yeah no so, we brought that up in the quick tip so what i had said was it, it would be a show that is technically about the joker right mm-hmm. so it, it's his perception on things and it's so we start with Joker and say it's he has a, a crime planned, right? He's getting it going. But in the background, they don't show us what he's doing, but you get this sense of Batman's coming. You don't know when he's coming. You don't know what he's doing, but you know he's coming. And that how Joker, um, you know, uh, deals with that and plans around that and, and yeah. get, you know, gets his crime. Like an alternate take thing. on on. On a st- like a story. Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just in a sense, but you know, Batman's Batman is there. They faced before and you know, yeah. he's coming. You just don't know when, but he's, he's coming. I think it'd be cool to see, like, Absolutely. to be, we'll love that. So you're, you're, you're with Joker while he's like hiring henchmen or yeah. Like I, I just say that for some reason, but like, while he's like, like getting ready, like he's ex, uh, executing his plans and stuff and like you know batman's about to come foil it but yeah, it's yeah. scare it scares you just as much as it yeah, scares yeah that's yeah that's yeah. exactly what i was thinking you established you put fear into the air because it, again you're not showing batman what he's doing. preparing yeah or, you don't you have no idea what batman is doing all you know is that he's gonna show up you know what i'm saying yeah i would you know, you know about, about it? if i can add to that you do course. a series like that and then they start doing joker's origins but then you do different origin stories and you're not sure which one's real. Kind of like in the dark night. Like, yeah. oh, okay, so yeah. this is how you came to Joker. Oh, wait, yeah. no, it's just <laughs> yeah. this. You want to know like, if I got sure these which one is true. Yeah. 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 That, absolutely. Right. That's, I always like that. That'd um, be cool. That psychologic, like you can literally see Heath Ledger becoming insane. Yeah. yeah. Slowly yeah. throughout that. It, yeah. Like it's getting worse. Um, yeah. Um, I liked it. I, I yeah. he, he killed it literally, you know? <laughs> So great movie. Absolutely. I like those Joker um, focused because the Dark Knight is very much Joker's movie. It really, oh, yeah. you know, it, all yeah. the character building, all the like attention, real attention is yeah. on Joker. You know, Kills every uh, scene. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, just, that's so crazy. And yeah. he's actually not in it that much. No. If you watch like, the movie no. again, he's at the beginning. He doesn't show up to like 45 minutes again. Yep. And then he shows, you know, then there's all this Harvey Dent story, and then he shows up for the last. He's not in it that yep. much, but but it's it it like it is, yes, it, and Har- him and Harvey Dent. It, that's yeah. what the movie is about. It's yeah, the two of them. Um, so so let's uh, we're gonna be wrapping it up soon. Sure. Um, but so, so a couple final questions that I have, um, for and you. And I have a final me. thought too to close with. So, all right, uh, nice. beautiful. My man's prepared. I like that. So <laughs> so as far as the Snyder Cut goes, right? Um. There are, you know, there's a couple of things that we've said today that either A, we don't like, B, we're really excited for. Um, so why, like, why does this movie mean so much to you personally? Like, because we all have our reasons, right? Mm-hmm. We all have our, whether you like Snyder's style, whether you like the DC characters more than any director could like matter. Uh, what is it for you that does it? Like, why does this movie mean a lot to you? Um a lot of stuff that Justice was saying about Batman, I actually kind of agree with him. But I saw what Zach was trying to do. And here's the thing. I love the Marvel movies. I like that this is something different. It's I like that it's edgy and dark because we get enough of the fun stuff with Marvel. I really think his there are things he does. His casting, I think, is always dead on, even if you disagree maybe about Batman. I think the way he uses That's musical amazing. cues is amazing. Um, mm-hmm. That Superman Man of Steel theme or even the Batman versus Superman music – and he's a great visual director. You can take any frame of his movies, and there's something aesthetically pleasing that I don't get from other comic book movies that I love that are even better made, quote unquote. 
there are parts of Batman vs Superman and Man of Steel that I think are better done than Avengers Infinity War, which I think Infinity War is a better movie. He puts his soul into it, and even when it doesn't work for me, I can still enjoy it. It's almost like um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Hieronymus Bosch. Like he was a Renaissance artist. He would type these like really kind of gory like pictures, but it works. Like depictions of hell. It's not like you like it, but you see an artist's vision shine through the work. And that is something I didn't appreciate about him before. I appreciate it about him now. Even if the Snyder Cut tends to be underwhelming, I'm still happy it's coming out because like his previous movies that I didn't like at first, I grew, I, I started to love them and now I love watching them again and again. Right. And people, people actually, so our, our guest next week, Sean O'Connell, people, there are, no, Wait, I'm, I'm not, not going to, back. <laughs> you'll be, Jack, you'll be back eventually. I can promise uh, you that. So people Don't give a lot. Of, cut you off. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. People throw a lot of shade at Sean because yeah. he's not a. He didn't like Snyder's movies yeah. until until he and like I I didn't like Star Wars until four years ago. Yep. Right. Yep. I always hated it because everyone loved it because I was that cynical person who was like, oh, stupid. Yeah, I've always been like that. Right. So it was weird. Um, I think that's why I got into comics and stuff in the first right. place because kids I was around did not like comics. You know what I think it might be? Tyler, I think a lot of people might have liked it, Zach's vision, but didn't say it because everyone was like, this movie is the worst movie. And you're like, yeah, it is the worst movie. Like, it's very yeah. possible. Like, a lot of fans like myself kind of like parts of it, but were made afraid to admit it. People oh, I mean, yeah. like social gatherings, like, dude, that sucks. I'm like, yeah, 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 no, yeah, totally. I hate it. No, nah, <laughs> yeah. see, I see, see, okay. I genuinely hate it. I agree. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I would see that because yeah. some people don't know how to. It's not that they don't have their own opinions. It's that they're afraid that they're going to get mocked for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've always. Yeah, yeah. If you're in front of ten people. You're yeah. in front of ten people, and they're all saying the same thing. You're the only one who differs. Yeah, some. Yeah, I that, like that being that be, person. I yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm exactly like you. I I refuse to watch things. When I was a kid, I refused to watch anything that I heard other people talking about. If I went to school and there was a group of five people talking about a song or something, I wouldn't listen to it. I wouldn't go near it. I would specifically go up to them and say, yo, that thing was terrible. I didn't even watch it. And I know it sucks. You know, just because you like it. Cause I was a horrible child. <laughs> Um, and there will be haters for this. I guarantee you when it comes out, yeah, like, oh, it's absolutely. only got 40% of rot. I told you it was going to hey, suck. You know, it's going to happen. There's a solid chance I'm one of those people. Yeah. There's a solid yeah. chance. I yeah. really don't like Snyder. Um, <laughs> that being said, real quick, what you said, the visual thing, you are absolutely right. I've always said that. DC has, I don't know, every time I watch a Suicide Squad and Justice League are the most uh, apparent for this. Yeah. You feel like you're watching a comic. It, it, yeah. It feels more like you're in Gotham City or Metropolis. Me and him had this conversation already. Uh, when you watch Marvel, you can very much tell they just took these characters and dropped them into New York. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But like when I'm watching DC, I actually feel like they're in a different place. I feel like I'm looking at actual Gotham City or Metropolis. Yeah. Or, you know, they like, look like comic book panels. And I love the Marvel yeah, movies, but I love that. They're very poorly shot or very generically yeah. shot. Yeah, yeah, there's not too much going on, but I think they're changing that because Infinity yeah. War and Endgame have some better uh, shots oh, yeah, we'll see. and that stuff going on. Thor so arriving think- in Wakanda. You say Thor, Wakanda, everyone knows what you're talking about. Everyone exactly. remembers the music, the yep. way it lands and the yeah. line he says. I think they're they're um, they're um adjusting that because Marvel's not dumb. They notice that kind yeah. of stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. There's so a reason they're the, they're the, they, they're the top of the boot. Yeah, there's a reason yeah. everybody knows Marvel now, um, you know? All right, so you said uh, that you're excited about that. So the reason that it matters so much to me is because, uh, like, Bat- I've always thought that, you know, Batman isn't just Batman. He stands for, you know, justice. Like, all those characters, yeah. all those characters stand for something different for me, right? Yeah. Together, together, all made up, uh, the Justice League, they stand for, like, the, the, that's the way I would like to be. Maybe not the way I am most days, right? But you stand for the right things. Like I've maybe always wasn't happy with myself or the way I looked or, or something like that. But I could always, you know, fall into comic books and yeah. be like, well, Batman, that's who I would like to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Same reason I love Captain America. He does it yeah. the right, yeah. right thing for the right reasons. Yep. And not because it's the cool thing to do. I know exactly what you're talking about on so. a regular basis. Every time I go work out, I, I envision, um, Anime, you know, because anime's general subject is don't give up willpower. Yeah, yeah. That's what anime is. It's all about willpower, right? 
So I always picture that. That's what gives me motivation. I know exactly what you're talking about because I do the same thing. Yeah. Um, I, and it's funny you say that because I think to myself on a regular, like, you're way too deep into fantasy land, Pippin. Like, you need <laughs> to come back to reality. Like, everything I do, you know what, like, a dream of mine is? You ever seen a scene uh, in, like, a, a video game or something when somebody does the starting position to run, right? You put your front forward and your back foot behind you. And you press down, you take off, and you start sprinting. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And they break the concrete, the ground beneath their foot when they take off. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Have yeah, you ever yeah. seen that scene before? I, If I had a genie, that would be one of the things I wish I could do. Oh it's just God. so I, I, cool. I it's healthy. <laughs> healthy. Look, people talk about, oh, the real world. What's happening in our world? Politics, code. People are yeah. going crazy. Yeah. They're draining brain cells about stuff they can't control. And then, yep. oh, well, well, you read Batman or you watch, you know. Yep. You know what? I, it makes me happy. I could have the worst day. There are days where I've had awful days. And this time might sound funny. I'll put BVS and kind of give me hope because it's a movie about people going through yeah, yeah. hard Absolutely. stuff and yeah. then having to work together. Absolutely. You know? I use, like I said, I use it, it inspires as me, movie. even though it's a gloomy movie. Yeah, I um, use it as motivation. Like I said, when I'm working out and, and stuff like that, it, it motivates me to keep going. Yep, Absolutely. Yep. yep, exactly. All all of that. So uh, so I mean, we all have the same motivations to our, towards why we love the material. So that's no, that's that's a good way to end it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So with, I think you said you had a final thought. Yes. And I thought about this when I was, when we were talking. You said I came prepared. I didn't. I did. If you had told me, well, more than a year ago, when Avengers Endgame came out and it was a huge phenomena, if you had told me, Jack, in one year you're going to be more excited about the DC extended universe than you will about Marvel, I would never have believed it. Yeah. Because right yeah. now I'm more excited about the Snyder cut a possibility of an air cut. I'm excited about Flashpoint more so than I am about Black Widow or even Doctor Oh, Doctor yeah. Doctor yeah, Doctor. yeah, absolutely. Or even Black Spider-Man Adam. 3. Spider-Man 3 could be good or yeah, whatever so they call it. Marvel, Marvel only has me for Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. But everything else, I'm, I can't wait for the Suicide Squad. I can't wait for Matt Reeves, Batman, um, oh, yeah, oh, Black, yeah. Black Adam, Adam, Flashpoint. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm on the so, same page. I'm, I'm, so, I'm has more excited now yeah. than I, I would never imagine that. If you told me that a year ago, oh, yeah. you'll be more excited about the DCEU. I would Zach question the movie. I'd be like, nah. Yeah. I would question that too. The but way I really am. The way that we, him and I put it was like Marvel's like your elder child that yeah. is off. You know, he's a he's a grown adult now. Yeah, he's like you don't nurse. need to. Yeah, you don't need to worry <laughs> about him yeah. or her. Uh, you know, we're we're still nurturing the DCEU, and yeah. we're still. Yeah. breastfeeding it yeah and uh and make know, it grow make so it awesome. grow yeah. i still so, have to tell dc to brush his teeth every night yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <you know. laughs> so that's you know we're still wait and i think dc fandom was genius the way they yeah, re- great. i had a good time with fandom. the way yeah. they reinvigorated well, my like i think him and i was speaking after uh and we're like i've never been this excited for the oh, dc yeah, absolutely. universe yeah absolutely so, yeah no dc the fandom was great Fandom put yeah. like I've always DC. It's always been my favorite, but for the DC EU, Fandom is the reason I'm excited like I am now because we got that Matt Reeves trailer, and then we got like kind of a trailer for Suicide Squad and Black Adam. Not really, but yeah. like it gave us a gist. I know? thought that Snyder Cut trailer was amazing. I, I, I did watched it like twice a day. Yes, yep, yep. Which that, uh, Matt Reeves Batman I watch like twice a day. Which yeah. of it I can't wait. And I'm okay with the, them doing okay. A Ben Affleck series here. A yeah. Matt Reeves Batman here. Michael Keaton will be doing his own thing. Do it. People will get it. We'll get it. Yeah. yeah. They, they already like, why are the three Batmans? Yeah. They'll get it. Give me four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all you got. Three. <laughs> Keep them coming. Um, I want to see Terry. Oh, yeah. God. I want Terry. Oh, that'd be great. So uh, that that's where I think that Michael Keaton thing works. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Is yeah, him being older Bruce, and yeah. then uh, yeah, you so, that Batman music from that first film, like they did that in Justice right, League. Yeah, I didn't like yeah, it there, but bring that back. Bring that from Burton Gotham City back. Yeah. Then you have the that'd Batman be great. Yeah, absolutely. do it. Yeah. Um, People will pay. So, we will pay. I I, I will give pay. me. Yes. <laughs> don't pirate money. the Snyder. Yes. People ah. watch it. Don't pirate it. Yeah, so I say that. I say that. So I had a long spiel about pirating. Yeah, yeah, so pirate, you are the worst type of people. But yeah. um, but I, I, I can think of a couple more. that are pretty worse than yeah. Pirates. Okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> um. So with that said, everybody, uh, we the were gonna dog farted. what the dog farted. Eh, whatever, man. Yeah. He's, he's got <laughs> terrible. Let him let him live. Let him live too. Um. So with that said, Jack, thank you 
so oh, much for, thank you. for coming oh, on. It was a pleasure. It really when was. When you said 40 minutes, I'm like, this ain't going to be 40 minutes because when oh. you get into this stuff. No, no. It's, been, it's been almost two hours. Yeah. Almost so, two hours did, well. did we never make the time that we plan on making no. those episodes. They we were going to go we were gonna do like an outro afterwards. No, yeah, that's not happening. That's not we're happening. We're getting an outro right now. Listen, Jack, it was a, a legitimate pleasure. Yeah, he can join us um, for the outro. By all, dude, by all means, you're welcome back. You are a friend to the corner. That was Thank a great you. conversation. You have uh, you kind of represent the two of us. You basically us combined. <laughs> yeah. um, so like, uh, like the Justice League. I'm like Zack Snyder and yeah. Whedon. <laughs> yeah, yes. put together that. Yeah, my my hero. <laughs> um, Except no mustache. So, so. Yeah, <laughs> don't edit. Don't out. edit it out. That you know, <laughs> edit in the mustache. How great. much? How advanced is CGI at this point? And you couldn't edit out a mustache any yeah, better than that. Yeah, you had to give him a whole mouth. They're like shit. Oh. We, we only have three hundred dollars yeah. for you the know mustache. Those mouths that they did. You ever seen annoying orange and those no. weird mouths they put on the fruit? No. Nope. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I mean, yeah. That style. That's what they did to Calvin. It's like that cheap budget, low yeah. budget. You ever seen them? You could a- tell they just didn't care at this point. Yeah. Like yeah. that <laughs> last 2017 year, Whedon comes on. You could tell he didn't care. The yeah. actors don't seem like they want to be there anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. and also oh, I hope they do press. I hope they do the press. Zyder's like I hope they do the press for this. Like Snyder, yeah. they get them all together in a room and do press. I would love to see it. That'd be great. Yeah, yep. I would love to see it. Or that. get them all on a Zoom call because yeah. that's the world we live well, in. Most likely yep. it'll be a Zoom call. I don't see a press conference happening yeah. um, because not just because of Corona, just because I don't see them doing it. But a Zoom call definitely. Mm-hmm. All right, so thank you. Like okay, so I'm gonna start this intro. Let me get through it. All right. Nope. I know it's easy, but we can do this again. I think I think this is fun. So maybe yeah, maybe yeah. after maybe after we wrap up um on this whole month, then we can start planning something. Because we uh, I mean, I'm free, right? Yeah. So we do this all the time. So yeah, um, yeah more than welcome to come back. Man. So, uh, my name's T Y, and I'm Big signing Jeff, out. Uh, Jack, thank you so much. Uh, if you want to give a, a an outro, goodbye. Please do uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, get jacked one four one. I'll be doing a small thing on the PS five next week. Um, uh, nice. I'm going to be doing unveiling. I'm getting it and uh, maybe do some gameplay and stuff. If you're into gaming and really big opinions, just follow me on Facebook, follow me on uh, uh, YouTube, get jacked one four one. And I would love to come back. Absolutely. We would love to have you. Uh, and as always, we will be back next week. And You'll see us for a quick dip, baby. Yep, we will be here for the quick dip, and we will also be joined by Mr. Sean O'Connell, where we get to probe, whoa, whoa. probe his mind about the release of Snyder yeah. Cut book, yeah. which comes out in February. So, yeah. Yeah. Jack, Jack, tune in so we can uh, get some we can get some viewers on that because <laughs> oh yeah, definitely uh, we need to help promote it. Yeah, um, again, Jack, it was a pleasure. We're signing out. We're signing out. Big drip. Out. We do a few. We, we do, do it for the culture. culture.